Hi, I'm here at Massacre Canyon, Nebraska. Often when we hear the term massacre with regards to the American West or any location in the United States for that matter, we think of a site where Indians killed settlers or where Indians were killed by the army. Here at Massacre Canyon, that was not the case. In this out-of-the-way site located in southwest Nebraska, it was one Indian tribe killing members of another tribe. At this location, a war party of Lakota in 1873 attacked and massacred a Pawnee hunting party. The Pawnee and Lakota had been enemies since the 1830s when the Lakota began moving into the Great Plains. As a result of disease and continual warfare against the larger tribes of the Great Plains, the population of the Pawnee had been greatly reduced and they had ceded much of their land to the U.S. By the mid-19th century, the Pawnee were confined to a reservation in modern-day eastern Nebraska. Due to their long rivalry with the Lakota, in 1865, Pawnee Braves enlisted as scouts with the United States Army for the Powder River War, a campaign against the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Sioux culminating in the Battle of the Tongue River, in which the Pawnee played a principal role. Pawnee scouts were the major combatants against the Cheyenne Dog Soldiers camp at the Battle of Summit Springs in 1869. Pawnee warriors also protected railroad workers during the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad through Nebraska and Wyoming. These actions only worsen relations between the Pawnee and the Lakota. In August 1873, a Pawnee hunting party of about 400 men, women, and children traveled into western Nebraska to hunt buffalo under the leadership of Skytreath. They were also accompanied by trail agent John Williamson. At the same time, a large party of Burley Lakota, led by Chief Two Strike, were buffalo hunting in the same area. A group of Ogallala Lakota were also in that area. Lakota scouts discovered the Pawnee camp and spread the news. One eyewitness recalled, Instantly, all the warriors began to get ready to go on the warpath. Around the thousand warriors set off for the Pawnee camp to make a quick attack and prevent the Pawnee from striking first or escaping. The Pawnee had been warned about the dangers in the area. Agent Williamson wrote an account a few years after the massacre. Three white men came into camp and reported to me that a large band of Sioux warriors were camped 25 miles northwest, waiting for an opportunity to attack the Pawnee for several days. Previous to this, white men had visited us and warned us to be on our guard against Sioux attacks and I was a trifle skeptical as to the truth of the story told by our white visitors. But one of the young men appeared to be so sincere in his efforts to impress upon me that the warning should be heeded that I took him to Sky Chief. Sky Chief said the men were liars, that they wanted to scare the Pawnee away from the hunting grounds so that the white men could kill the buffalo for the hides. On the morning of August the 5th, the Pawnee went up a canyon. Scouts took the lead and the families followed with the pack horses. The Pawnee hunters in the front 
were the first fatalities, lured into a trap by a Lakota decoy. Agent Williamson and another man rode out to arrange a peace council, but Lakota bullets forced them back. Sky Chief fought bravely during the first part of the battle, shouting words of encouragement to his people. He killed his own son with his knife, telling the Sioux that they would not get his child. Knowing he would be killed, he took off his bear claw necklace, which was the symbol of his chieftainship, and gave it to his brother, saying, Take the necklace and try to escape. I do not want the Sioux to gain possession of it. Dog Chief managed to bring the necklace to safely, which is now housed in the Denver Museum of Art. Greatly outnumbered, the Pawnees started a disorganized retreat, which soon became a rout. Women threw hides, dried meat, and saddles from the pack horses as the Sioux shot from both sides of the canyon. The shots were heard by a small detachment of soldiers from Fort McPherson, camp seven miles to the east of the canyon. Pawnee survivors found the camp as well as Agent Williamson, who had made escape early during the fight. They were able to provide some protection Pawnee and advise them to proceed further east. The soldiers rode up the canyon that afternoon. The surgeon described what they saw as they marched over the battleground. The first body we came upon was that of a woman. We advanced from the mouth of the ravine to the head and found 59 dead Pawnee. For some reason or other, a number of the dead women lay naked. How many Pawnee were killed in the massacre is disputed. The Pawnee agent in his report stated 71 warriors and 102 women and children were killed. All were brutally mutilated and scalped. The tra trail agent Williamson, who returned to the canyon in late August, reported finding 156 bodies. Pawnees taken captive by the Sioux were later released at the insistence of the Army and the Indian Agency. They rejoined their tribe. The Pawnee were compensated for their loss. $9,000 was paid to them for more than 100 horses, 20 tons of dried meat, and all sorts of equipment. The money came from the, the annuities of the Lakota. Despite the efforts of the U.S. government, the Lakota continued to raid the Pawnee, and eventually, in 1876, the Pawnee in Nebraska left their reservation and moved into Indian Territory. It was not until the 1920s that the Pawnee and Lakota sat down for peace. In 1930, a monument was erected commemorating the conflict in Massacre Canyon. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment.